Talking with Topher is sponsored by slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and naturalbossnh.com. More on that later. Let's get into episode 77. What is happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back. I am recording this on Monday, September 20th, 2021, about 2, 3 o'clock, no, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, for you, it is September 23rd. It's Thursday. I hope the weather's nice. I hope you're having a great start, middle, end of your day. Depends on when you're listening and or watching this. Um, and I want to say thank you to everybody for subscribing, watching, uh, liking, commenting, keep it up, share, rate, and review the podcast. Uh, if you're listening to it and you're enjoying it, uh, you might know somebody else that would enjoy it as much as you do. So pass the word on and don't forget to set those alarms. If you want to know when all the new episodes upload, set the alarm. And you'll see when they upload. Um, If you are new to the podcast, please be hitting that subscribe button. All right. This is free for you. It's not free to do. So the only thing I ask, the most important thing that you can do for me is subscribe. The other things that you can do is set the alarm so you know when all the new episodes upload. Uh, Share, rate, review, and comment. All of that stuff helps the algorithm. It helps push the podcast somewhere to the middle center. Hopefully it gets to the top one day, but we'll see. But I need your help to do that. All right. I need four, uh, 4,000 hours watched and 1,000 subscribers to, I guess, get paid by YouTube. So I'm asking for your help to do this. Pass it on. Subscribe. Share, rate, review, and like the podcast. All right. You can follow me on social media. Yeah, I'm on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. If you go there, you can follow. I do stuff every week. Uh, Some weeks are better than others, but it's a great way to get some extra content throughout the week. So go to Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Give a follow more content and then of course if you want to get more involved with the podcast you can send your emails over to t-a-l-k-i-n with topher at gmail.com that's talking with topher at gmail.com i'm giving away some free merch from slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com you gotta send your email in and put slow down in the subject line if i pick it out and go over it on the podcast going to send you some free merch. Super exciting. I'm looking for any story you got going on. Uh, Maybe you stole from a store when you were a kid and it got you in a lot of trouble and you learned a lesson from that. That's, That's just an example. There's all kinds of things that happen to us and we always feel like we are the only ones going through it. But there, you're not and I'm not. So if you want to share your story and get some kick ass slow down uh, merch, send your email to T A L K I N with Topher at gmail.com. Put slow down in the subject, and that's all you got to do. All right, so that's how you get involved with the podcast more. And now it is time to get into it. So, first and for- foremost, first off, I want to just get this right out of the way. Uh, ever since I got the camera, the new mics and everything else, well, things have been messing up and I'm really glad I got rid of that last camera because yeah, it froze on me last episode. I was so upset, uh, when editing, I found that, uh, I froze and then I had to shut off the camera, come back. Uh, it was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare, so I'm really glad that that one got uh, returned because it wasn't just the lens that I was having an issue with. And then I realized that my volume got turned down on my audio interface, which screwed up the 
playback sound from uh, the videos I was playing. So I believe I did. I just did three test runs. You know, couple minute or so a piece. Made sure all the sound was coming in. Making sure the volumes were correct. Um, so we shouldn't have those issues this time around. Tyler came over on Friday, even though I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but uh, we ended up just playing around with the equipment, and I tested out the camera by hitting record and just letting it go for the entire time. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not anything that I'm going to put up, but the camera did not uh, freeze on me. So I'm hoping that by the end of this podcast, we'll have... Um, Little to no hiccups this time around. But again, I always appreciate everybody sticking with me. It's a learning process. And I just uh, am I'm constantly learning on this thing. So it's, 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 it's really fun, but it's also frustrating. But that's the whole point when you learn something new. It's, it's never easy to learn. And there is a lot involved when doing this. And I don't know. Every time it just shows me uh, why um, you know, people hire people, you know, to take care of editing and photos and cameras and all this other shit, because there is a lot going on and it does take away, uh, from the things I wish I was doing. Not, um, not like, uh, I, I wish there was somebody else I could just edit this thing and take care of it for me. But unfortunately, I'm not capable of paying anybody and you can't ask anybody to work for free, but I do understand why, uh, they do this. And then the other thing is, you know, when you think things are coming, you know, you, you set plans, you set goals, and you're like, oh, yes, finally. Everything is coming together. We're getting to the end of this. You know, it happens to me all the time, and it's so frustrating, but there's always a hiccup. And... I don't know. It just sucks every time because you have plans and you have uh, things that you're working on. And then right now, I hope you can't hear it. I did a test run again. I'm testing everything before I start recording, but just to get this crap out of the way. Uh, I got a fan running, you know, circulating the air, pulling the air out of this room because my AC died. You know, I'm just... It's so frustrating. You know, I already had an AC die earlier. I was like, oh, good. You know, we replaced it. And then this one dies. And I'm like, oh, my God. I just, how, I can't replace all three of them right now. Or, uh, you know, I mean, two out of three. Uh, it's just, it's frustrating. You know, you make a plan. You're like, eh, uh, everything's working. Uh, you got money allotted for everything. It's all figured out. And then, boom. Something else hits you in the face. Something else breaks. And you're just like, this is so frustrating. But that's what life is as well. It's very frustrating and there's lots to uh, overcome. Uh, but let's get into the weekly roundup today, all right? Weekly roundup. So um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday was actually awesome. It was great. No crazy customers. No... Orders up to the ceiling. Um, but there was pretty much like no orders. I got like two or three. So I'm waiting to see what happens this week. But yeah, it was great. The weekend uh, came up quick. I got a bunch of stuff done uh, that needed to be done. Re you know, I, I love I love moving everything on the shelves. Um, I, I don't like anything staying in the same spot. It was just the way I was taught when I was in retail. And being capable of doing it on my own is uh, just so much fun. You know, I, I like to make the colors run. You never make anything clash. You never want too many colors. I like to do waterfalls. If you don't know what that is, it's when you're looking at a shelf and you'll have like, products that look alike all the way down one one side and then down the center that similar and then down the other side they're all similar maybe in color maybe in pattern whatever it happens to be uh but you run them down the shelf and they call that a uh, they call that a waterfall and i like doing all that stuff so you get to do all that when there's no orders to be done clean some stuff 
but it was it was just a it was a good weekend and I had a lot of fun and actually everything went extremely smoothly. Um, Friday night, Tyler popped over. Um, he was telling me about how he uh, just moved into his uh, new apartment. Um, I'm going to get more into that a little bit later, but yeah, that was, that was a great conversation. Um, then we, of course, I just told you we messed around with the, uh, equipment and, uh, then you got Sunday. Now Sunday was awesome. I haven't had a weekend, you know, I haven't had a week like this in a while. So it's really starting to feel like things are turning around. Um, you know, getting, uh, the grass is growing in nice and thick where they had to reseed and put some straw down. That's finally coming in, but we had to be rebuild the fire pit. So putting the fire pit ba back, taking all the old broken bricks out, throwing them away. And then uh, I had 65 bricks. I had to go and replace, uh, at home Depot, but now it's done and it looks pretty and I'm excited. I'll put some pictures up, um, of that. And then, um, just to break up the monotony of my face, I guess. But yeah, so finish the fire pit. I, uh, you know, this lawn care thing, it still continues. And now I, I fertilized my lawn for the very first time in nine years. And I kept walking. Like when we walk the dogs, I walk one way. My wife walks up, up a different way. Um, I like to go the way I go because it's, much quieter. Um, I don't know if there's just less kids where I walk. I don't know if more people are just not at home when I walk that area, but it's very quiet. So you get bird sounds and that's about it. Maybe a couple cars passing, no big deal. But I walked with her a few times and everybody's like out of their house. There's kids yelling and screaming. There's other dogs, like the entire route. I'm like, well, this is annoying because you spend most of your time like yanking back on the dog because he just wants to go play with the other dogs and so and there's barking and it's loud and it's noisy and I just I do not like that so I'm walking the way I always do and um I walk by this guy's lawn it is dark dark green it's beautiful it's lush he's got little signs on it that say don't you know no peeing. Um, so I always make sure I stay away from it, but it smells really nice. I'm like, man, why doesn't my lawn smell like this? And I'm like, what is that smell? It's just, it's a nice smell. It's not the grass after it got cut smell. It's, it's weird. So I'm wondering what this smell is. I'm not looking it up on Google. I tend to just figure things out sometimes on my own like I did with this. So I go and get fertilizer on Sunday while I'm grocery shopping because I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to put all this water and all this other shit into it, I might as well fertilize it and keep it healthy when it goes to sleep. So here we go again. Here, here's the old man coming out of me. I'm fertilizing my lawn and then I have to water it, right? And then I go to move the sprinkler and I was like, oh, that's that smell I keep smelling when I walk by that other guy's. Oh, that I don't know. I don't know who lives there. I always say guys. It's just a, uh, I guess, um, built into me. But I, I, I was like, oh, that's that other lawn I smell. So, it wasn't the lawn I was smelling. It was the fertilizer that he was using. And I was like, oh shit. And now my lawn smells like his lawn. And I was so happy. I was like, oh, I like this. I wake up in the morning. It's like a. I don't know. I like the way it smells. It's friggin' weird, right? So next project is taking down the satellite dish. So I, I go up there. I got had to get a new ladder because um, it needed to go up over uh, onto the roof. And then you have to get, like, those horns for the ladder. And uh, my neighbor's always like, you can use my 24-footer if you want, but he's got an old fiberglass one. And I was like, it's just so heavy, you know? So I just went and got a 24 aluminum, got the horns for it or the stabilizer, and uh, threw that up there and went over the gutter onto the roof line. It was friggin' perfect. I was so happy. Um, get up there. 
There's nine bolts to take out of this thing. Uh, I take all the bolts out, and then I realize it's not just going to come off my roof, which completely makes sense. But I was like, no, 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 this is just going to pop right off. I figured if I got a putty knife under it, it would just, no, I'm so dumb. So I have to bolt it back to the house, right? I undid the little ones. I scooped those ones out, get the two stabilizer arms pulled away from the roof, um, and then I start digging at the base, and I notice that it's just, it's heavy. And I'm like, ah, this isn't going to work. So I had to take out four bolts on the side and took the fucking uh, satellite dish out, walked that down the ladder, because if you drop it on the lawn, it's just going to dent the lawn, and I couldn't have that. So I walk it down the ladder, go back up, unbolt the bottom bracket, and now it's not going to rip my shingles. So now I'm like digging at it with a putty knife. And there was a few spots I just felt it go. And I was like, great, that was through the shingle. So that was a bummer. But nice thing was is it didn't go too deep and it wasn't too big of a hole. So I just went to Home Depot and got some really good patch. Pat Filled it in, patched it up, smoothed it out. And now... The satellite dish that I haven't been using uh, for probably about five years now, and I think I got it disconnected a year before that, is finally off my house. It's at least five or six years old, wasn't being used. I was just afraid of getting electrocuted from the solar panels because two bolts... I'd have to like kind of get my hand underneath the solar panel just to use the ratchet, but the bolt would go up past. I didn't realize, and I should have, if I had a longer extension on uh, my drill or my impact gun, I would have been able to get the socket in there and then just get it out with a tool, but I used an adjustable or um, one of those, what are they called? Uh, they got the round at the end. I think it's just a wrench. Um, but it has a pivoting so you can like put it on a bolt and go, er, er, and that's how you like, er, 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 you know what I mean? And, uh, so I, I was like worried about that. So I never touched the thing. That's what it was. I had it taken. I had, I had it shut off and then I didn't take down the satellite dish. I was pissed off that, um, they didn't take their satellite dish and they're like, well, that's not what we do. It's like, well, I canceled your service and I don't need it. You should come take the satellite dish. It's such a waste. Um, and then when I got the solar panels, I told them, Hey, can you please take down that satellite dish? They didn't take down the satellite dish either. And then they ran the solar panels the way they did. And I was very petrified because I heard of a lot of people, uh, like firefighters and stuff like that. Uh, where if you have solar panels, they won't even attempt to go onto your roof um, and do anything that they normally would if you didn't have solar panels. They'll literally just let your house burn um, because they get electrocuted. So I don't know how that happens, but I was like petrified to touch these things. Well, lo and behold, they're fine. I, I touched it. I had I bumped my hand on it. And nothing happened. I think you have to be touching like the electrical wires and stuff that connect it um, in order to get electrocuted. So that was nice to find out. I took that down, patched it up, and now it looks pretty. Then I had to clean the gutters out, hopefully for the last fucking time, um, because it was just the helicopters that dumped from the old maple. Um, and right now I should be cleaning up leaves. I should be raking. I should be dealing with helicopters and I got none of that. So I'm very excited. This is the first fall. I have no cleanup. I have no raking, no nothing. And I mean, I don't really have much to do out there cause I'm already maintaining the lawn so that hopefully it comes in nice and thick next year. Um, but yeah, so I cleaned all that out and I got some foam thing that they make for the gutters. I don't remember what it's called, but you stuff it in there and it keeps all the debris from going into the gutter, but it allows water through it. So I put that all the way at the end, uh, where the gutter comes down from the other roof line and goes into this gutter and then runs, um, down towards my farmer's porch and it, 
it wasn't too bad. I th- I didn't know how easily it was going to be to put in, but I was like, hey, if this stops me from having to come up here and clean these out, then I'm in. So I'm going to see how that one does over the winter, and then uh, the, we'll, I'm going to check it out in the spring. And if it does really well, I might just line almost all my gutters with it. I know everybody's been getting these things, and they allow pin, you know, uh, stuff to fall over. But I was like, it wasn't that expensive. I, don't, I really wish I could tell you. I, I don't know if it was more than 8 bucks for the thing. And, you know, it was about 3 feet, 4 feet long. And uh, so I was like, oh, man, I might just do it to this whole side and then I'll never have to clean out this gutter. You might have to go out there and brush off the top, but I'd rather do that than dig in there. So I don't know. We'll see how that works. And then the final project of the of Sunday was putting on two new gutters. Um, now, my whole house got done in gutters, but uh, I have a pitch and then a, a roof line. It's the second floor. And right in here are two channels, you know, where your roof comes together. Well, it's, it's, it's like the aluminum, and then they shingle up to it. And so water runs down that line. And it was running down the line. Actually, it goes this way. Yeah, runs down the line. And then it falls onto my farmer's porch roof. And I just replaced this thing about three, four years ago. Now, I... Didn't, like, get the most expensive shit on the planet. But the roof had at least a 10-year life, right? I was like, it's a rollout roof. We just needed to make it, you know, a good amount of time. So I got a 10-year, I think. And then I go up there probably about five or six months ago. And I'm looking, and the two spots on the farmer's porch roof that are underneath that channel are completely worn out. And I was like, oh, no. So all the water's falling off of there, slamming onto the roof, and just washed everything away. So that roof is pretty much ruined, and what I'm doing is, is I'm hoping that these gutters that I put up will catch that water, and then it will get channeled down, and then it goes into the downspout, and then it just trickles onto the farmer's porch roof and makes its way to the ground. So I'm hoping those work. I went up there in a very heavy rainstorm once just to watch it, and it gets some distance. So I'm almost like, I think, I have a feeling if it's a heavy enough rain, it's just going to go whoosh and shoot right over it. But that's the chance you take. At least it's got protection from a light rain. It's got protection from, as long as it's not a complete and absolute downpour, which we do get, but even at some heavy times, it's not too bad. So we'll see how that works. I'm excited to actually see it. And then my wife's like, oh, well, it looks like Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are going to be rainy. So that, that should work out. And I was like, oh, okay. So those were my three projects for Sunday. I ended up getting all of them done. It wasn't until about 6 p.m. Uh, where I finally, like, finished. I'm excited about it. I ended up finishing all the projects about 6.30. At 6, 6.30, I finally got done. We got done with everything that was going to Home Depot, eating, all the shit, and just enjoying some of the night uh, last night, but I was so exhausted. I was in bed by like 1030. It was crazy. I don't think I've been to bed that early in a long time. I usually stay up pretty late, but I was so happy to just get that all done. It feels good to make a list of shit to do. And then when you go back to that list and you're literally crossing out everything on it, it feels good. You know, and I do that with everything I do. Uh, I've got a list of everything that I have to get done today after I record. And when I, I like doing this because it makes me see my, my accomplishments, my uh, uh, finishing things. You know, when I don't do it, I'm like, what did I do today? And I can't remember a damn thing I did. And I find that to be so frustrating and I'm like, oh, so I, what did I do? I just waste all, I'll waste all my time. 
Um, so I like to do that a lot, writing out lists and uh, working, uh, getting the projects done, and then checking them off. It's like a grocery list, you know, and it makes you feel like uh, you've done more with your day, at least for me. At least for me, it works really, really well. I'm, if I do all these things and then at the end of the day I didn't make a list, I, I don't feel completed. It's weird. I don't know why. I'm like, oh, well, what did I do? And then I just think I sat around, did nothing. But I'm like, oh, I did do this, but you know what I mean? So that's something I use for myself. I, I like to make a list of everything I want to get done. And then when I'm all done with everything, I like to go through and check off the list and just feel that accomplishment. Um, it feels good to accomplish things, you know? Just like I'm trying to accomplish uh, growing the lawn so I can get the dogs back into the backyard so I can get back to running and lifting weights again. I can't wait. Now, we're getting close, but we're not that close. Um, but then this brings me to today, Monday. Awesome, awesome day. I woke up at 6 yesterday and today, uh, so that was fantastic. Um, kicked ass this morning. Took care of the dogs. There was no broken mirror, so that went really smoothly. I actually got to enjoy my morning. The coffee, the walks, the watering of the grass, the smelling of the fertilizer. And then me and Tyler went to jujitsu. First time for me in two weeks. Um, when my prof when my professor asked me why, I was like, oh, I had stuff to do. It's like, no, you, I don't know why on the spot you don't think of things, but it's like, no, I, uh, popped my elbow, sprained my thumb and I had a lot going on at my house. So I was taking a break to heal and the elbow did pretty well. The thumb taping job today was horrible. I didn't have enough time to watch the video, so I tried to tape it from memory. That thing fell apart before we even did Randori. So I was like, ah, shit. I got to figure out how to tape this thing because it, it was a little bit painful today. But it was so good to get back on the mats. It was nice to go over some uh, techniques I haven't seen. Um, you know, uh, being in jujitsu, being, you know, six years into this, it's like, you still see things um, all the time. New stuff. It's crazy. It never ends. It's more and more involved. And uh, it was good to go over those techniques. I went against some heavy hitters today. You know, uh, I went against, uh, against his brown belt. Uh, he tapped me once, and I stayed out of his grips uh, for the remainder of the, of the five minutes. So that was a good round. And then me and Tyler went at it. That was fun. Um, I got him in a, I tried to do like a baseball choke, but I think I, I, I did a baseball choke, but I, I turned my blade down. And when I, when I cranked on it, I like, guess I crushed his trachea. He said it was like after, you know, like sore throat ish. And I was like, yeah, sorry about that, buddy. He's like, no, no, it's fine. You know, because it happens. This is what happens. We we do these things, and we're just like, yeah, it's, it's part of the game, right? And then I went against Professor, and man, oh, man. Oh, actually, Shihan Laura first, then Professor Lucas. So it was a great, great class, and it felt so good to be back on those mats. But I am starting to realize it's not enough to get rid of all of my anger, my angst, and just everything that I have bottled up inside of me. Um, with everything going on, I can't make Thursday classes at all. It's impossible. I don't have enough time in the morning. By the time I'm supposed to leave to go to jujitsu, I'm literally walking my dogs for the second time. It's just, it's, it's so hard. And it's, that's one of the reasons I want to get them back into the backyard. You know, I want to get, I want to get my jujitsu game back on. Um, but right now I could do Monday, Wednesdays, but not this Wednesday because I got some stuff to do. So I am just struggling with keeping up with my routine of jujitsu right now. I know it's part of life. I know this is some of the struggles we all have, but this, I'm just grinding to get back onto that horse. So I'm just taking care of everything, but I got to start working out at home. 
I got to start putting myself through some extensive exercising, something that completely exerts me. Yes, I do get tired and exerted at jujitsu, but it's not enough. I need that and something else. I just need to be mellow. And I know that part of my problem is that I'm not exerted. I'm not tired. I haven't put myself through anything really tough that day. And therefore, all the anger builds up. It had nowhere to go. And then it comes out at the wrong time or at the wrong person or for the wrong reason. And so now that's that's something I'm really starting to work on. I'm going to get my gym uh, at home. Uh, fix stuff, get some racks, get some stuff, and uh, I'm going to really start putting the work in on that one. Um, but I'm just excited to uh, to see everybody. It's always just, it's it's a family. It's a family there, you know? It's so much fun, and I just love seeing everybody on the mats, and I love seeing everybody. It just makes me feel good. It's a it's one of the re- what one of the reasons. I mean, there was many, many reasons, and there was you know people who got me into it. But you know that community thing. It really does do a lot for me, and I know other people that it does a lot for too. Sometimes even the workouts and the, all this other stuff, and you may not be getting stripes or whatever have you, whatever you're else you're battling with while you're there, none of that is as important as the community um, of people that you get to work with. I, it's just, it's amazing, and uh, I just, I, I really, really missed it. You know, two weeks off is two weeks too long. So, um, and that's about it. Here we are, Monday, recording, having fun. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, so about Tyler moving in, right? So he got his own place. And this made me think about myself and where I was at his age. And, you know, this is the first time he's moved out. It's his first place. He's got a roommate. Um, I guess it's a, it's a nice location. I'm excited to see it. Um, you know, when I got some time to head over there and, um, we just, I started reminiscing in my, uh, while we were talking about things, you know, I'm just listening to what he's going through and how he's taking care of stuff. And I'm giving him some tips on a few things to hopefully help him out. You know, I've, I've moved many times. Um, but when I was 25, man, I didn't have a roommate. I didn't have, uh, I, I always lived at a girlfriend's house. So those were my experiences. It was me moving out of my parents' house and in with my girlfriend and then out of my girlfriend's house and back into my parents and then blah, 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 back in, back out. Then I move into a crackhead's apartment. And then I move out back into the parents. And then I move out again. And then I move back again. And it's just this constant in and out, in and out until I was 27. And then I got my very first place on my own. But I was trying to not live at home since I was 18. So it's much different. But I just remember moving uh, into my place for the very first time I got my own place. Now I wasn't living with anybody. I got the whole thing myself. It was a nice little one bedroom in, in, in Penacook. Um, and it was just, it was nice. It was exciting that it was mine. You know, the, the, the background check went through the credit check went through and they handed me those keys And it was something that I didn't think I was going to be capable of doing, you know. And nowadays, you can't really do stuff like that on your own. Rent is just uh, ridiculous. But ah, hydrating with liquid death. I love that stuff. I started drinking the non-carbonated or, yeah, the non-carbonated one while I'm on mic. The other one gives me burps. I, I thought that was annoying. Um, but yeah, so 
I just remember moving in and getting stuff together, um, you know, buying stuff for the apartment, figuring out what you need, and then going through all of those experiences, buying shit you don't need, you know, all the experiences of learning how to live on your own. And and I was telling him, he was like, oh, I got some anxiety, I got this, I got that. And I'm like, dude. This is the experience. I wish I had somebody to tell me this when I first got involved in it. But it doesn't get any easier when you get your own place, when you get your own house. It just keeps getting harder. Uh, it keeps costing more money. So uh, it never gets easier. Never. And his his uh, grandmother told him that. She's like, oh, I'm glad you're having fun. But just to let you know, it doesn't get any easier. And it doesn't. We need people to tell us this. Because I feel like uh, everybody wants to tell us it's all rainbows and sunshine, and it's not. It's not. It's it's difficult. It's a learning experience, and it just gets harder as you get older um, and as you buy more shit. Because everybody wants to buy more shit, so you're going to buy more shit. You know what I mean? There's no way you're not. Um, and uh, so, so I... I Leave the, I, 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 I'm getting stuff for the apartment. I bought a bunch of shit that was a completely unnecessary waste of money. Um, and then uh, I was just letting them know what these things were that I went through. But I was also letting them know that I never stopped to, um, enjoy the experience. The, ins the experience of moving, the experience of living in your own place and buying shit and then buying the wrong shit or not buying, you know what I mean? Buying things that work, buying things that don't, having to do all these returns, doing all these things and then spending of the money, watching the money drain. Whether it's good or bad, it's still all part of the experience. So I told him today, I'm like, dude, just enjoy this. This is all part of it. Because this is the moment. And, and, and like for me, I look at, oh, I can't walk my dogs. I can't do that. I, I mean, I can't let my dogs outside. I can't do this. I can't do that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. But the experience that I'm going through right now is awesome. I mean, I'm growing grass for the first time. Um, I learned a lot about lawn care. You know, the podcast has a lot of errors and hiccups in it, but I have learned so much from when I started. So I have to stop and just go and breathe and be like, this actually has been a good learning experience, or I've enjoyed doing this, or look at what I've accomplished. It's all little things that you need to just step back, take a look at, and enjoy. And I told him that. I'm like, just enjoy what you're doing. Don't worry about anything else. Just enjoy the moment. Because you're in it, bro. This is the moment for you. You know? And I'm, I'm super pumped for him because I, I already told him this. But when he was at living at his parents' house, there's a lot going on there. Right? There's loudness, there's dogs, there's yelling and screaming at times, just like any household with, with parents and siblings and pets. So, but he was always on edge. He would get out of work, go home, and then it was just that, right? So now he gets to go home, but now he's going to his own place, and he actually gets to decompress. So I told him within the next month, I bet you he's going to be a, almost a completely different person because now he doesn't go home to any of the chaos, which is good. It's actually probably a little unhealthy to be involved in that at all times. Um, but uh, he was telling me already how things were happening at the house and he just showed up for support. And then... When he was done, he just went back to his apartment and decompressed. And it's like, that's what I was talking about, dude. Like, it's not that he doesn't care. It's that he doesn't have to 
lose all of his, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Damn it. It's, um, he actually gets to get away from it. He gets to get away from it and he gets to see a different side of life. And I was like, yeah, dude, this is how it's supposed to be. You make it what you want. And I have, I've made my house, uh, yelling, screaming, angry, uh, horrible situation for years on end. And unfortunately I'm trying to change that to a more, uh, calm and easier way. But he's going from the chaos. His, 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 what he actually does is, is nothing like that. So I knew once he got his own place, it was just going to be uh, this place of serenity, right? He's going to be able to go home, decompress, relax, play his music, do whatever, and then he's done. And I was like, dude, I'm telling you, one month after you move in, dude, I can't wait to see the person you're going to be. I can't wait. He's going to be completely different. There's still going to be some stuff because it takes years to get over your bullshit, but that's okay. So I just told him, keep doing what you're doing and uh, just take a breath. Be in the moment. And that's what I'm telling all of you out there. Let's be in the moment right now. Right? Whatever you're doing right now, it that's it. Be in that moment. Enjoy what you have. It is very important to enjoy what you have because if you... You'd be surprised at how many people don't have what you have, you know? So enjoy what you have. Enjoy the people around you, you know, all of that stuff. I think it's just super important sometimes to stop and I guess smell the roses, but I don't like saying that because I don't like roses. Um, But I just think we all need to stop and take a look at what we've done, what we've accomplished, and just enjoy that. Enjoy the moments. The small, the moments are so important. Um, I was doing it today after he left, you know, because every time I talk about this uh, with anybody, I'm like, man, you're right. And then I go out on my back porch and I go, oh, the sun's really hot. The grass is growing in. Look at everything that has been accomplished in the last 24 hours. It's amazing. It's amazing. Things are coming together. It just takes time. And we today have no patience. And I don't know why. I don't have, I've never had patience. That was one of my biggest issues. So to have patience today is nice. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. Not sure how to spell that. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. You can also find it in the description below the video. Yes. They've got new shit. What? New shit, yes. Kids, Cobra tea. Kids, Space Monkey tea. Kids, Gator tea. Kids, Girly Bird. I mean, amazing. Amazing colors, amazing prints, and they're going to look great on your kids for when they go back to school, right? Everybody's going back to school. They need new threads. Get them some slow-down clothing shirts all right they are amazing you still working out at home and you're sick of your yoga pants or your your uh leggings get some slow down ones these things are fire i love them the prints are amazing the colors are even better and they're all tattooed inspired all of these products are amazing whether it's the hats the towels the board shorts the, the, the sweatpants and sweatshirts, you got to get some. It's going to get cold. That's right. Fall is two days away. Yeah, September 22nd is fall. So get yourself some sweatshirts or sweatpants and stay warm this fall and winter with some slow down high quality uh, products. I'm loving, loving this stuff. They still got skateboards. They still got gloves. They still got it all. There's some shirts that are no longer obtainable, but that's okay because they got many more new ones coming behind it. 
So if you want any of these products, you have to go to slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. You're not sure how to spell that? Right here at the bottom of the screen or in the description underneath the video. New Hampshire Vape Gallery is located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Ring, where we're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. Feel free to give us a call, 603-814-4171, and you can shop inside of our store without a mask. We've got it. We've got it all. I am always so excited to talk about this. Nin pouches amazing 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 alternative to uh quit smoking and or vaping we've got escobars that's right the pastel cartel amazing they collaborated with savage who makes the ripe e-juices they got peachy mango pineapple kiwi dragonberry blue razzleberry pomegranate and on and on and on all of their wonderful bottled e-juices are now in an escobar battery for all of you our devices nord 4 ipx80 look at that screen amazing i love these things but we've got them all in stock all for you today you can't get menthol you can't get flavors well come and see the guys at the gallery that's right new hampshire vape gallery located at 180 lafayette road seabrook new hampshire down the street from home depot and next to smoke rings where we are open seven days a week from 10 30 to 8 p.m you can always give us a call 603-814-4171 and i look forward to seeing you there naturalbossnh.com that's n-a-t-u-r-a-l-b-o-s-s-n-h Com. I love this website. I use almost all their products. I use the salve for dry skin. I use the hand sanitizer to keep my hands clean and hopefully keep me from getting flu and COVID. I use the lip balm to keep my lips moist. That's right. I was using it in the spring and the summer. So, and then my wife uses the foot and body soap. It's amazing. It's just great products locally made and uh small business man it's small business this is a one woman operation yeah isn't that exciting i love supporting small business which is why i love supporting naturalbossnh.com that's n a t u r a l b o s s n h.com buy one or all five of these products today With all that said, it is time for current events. Here are five countries that are opening up and living with COVID. Now, I don't care who the five are. I don't care. The reason I don't care is because that's what we're going to have to do. That's it. It doesn't matter about anything else you want to get vaccinated get vaccinated you don't want to get vaccinated don't get vaccinated you want to wear a mask okay you don't want to wear a mask okay none of it matters it doesn't matter what does matter is that this is not going away and we all need to learn how to live with it you deal with it your way and i'm gonna deal with it my way I still don't wear a mask anywhere I go. I am fully vaccinated with the Moderna vaccination. I smoked a rig with somebody who popped positive for COVID two days later. Still haven't caught the fucking thing. Now, I don't know what this means. I'm actually irritated because the beginning of this year, I was in... Lockdown because Tyler got COVID. I am so angry that I have not caught this fucking thing. Now, I don't want the Delta variant. I don't want anything. I want. I wanted to catch the Alpha. I wanted to catch it when Tyler caught it. That's what I wanted. It never happened. I'm not like out there 
licking things to try and catch this fucking disease. Um, unfortunately, it did just kill one of my uncles. So I believe it's real. I know it's real. All right. It's all around me. I got people in my family dying from it now. So it sucks. But unfortunately, this is what we have to do. You can't close anything. You can't shut down jobs. You can't keep kids out of school. The decisions will have to be made by the people. Now, people aren't going to work because they're afraid. Parents are not sending their kids to school because they're afraid. I understand all that. But we can't shut down the world because you're living in fear. See, you're living in fear because that's what the news wanted. So if you're not going to work and you're not sending your kids to school and you're not doing these things because you're fearful of COVID, then the news won. The news won. It did its job because that's exactly what it was supposed to do. Now, there's, a, there's people like me who did everything you asked, but now you're backstepping and you're trying to get me to put on a mask again, and I'm saying, fuck you. I'm not putting on a mask again, except for Joe Rogan's October 8th show in uh, the Garden in Boston. That one, they asked me to put on a mask, I will. They asked me for a vaccination card, I'll have three copies for them. I have it on my phone, I got a QR, I got it all. Whatever you need. To allow me into that show. To see this. I'm there. I'm done. I'm doing it. But I'm not doing it every day. I mean anything that only has a 9 to 20% chance of doing anything. Is a waste of a chance. of. It's just a waste. What are we doing? You know. I, I, I've been strong against the mass ever since my wife got sick. And just to clarify. I don't want to go all over it again. But because she was working in a freezer, and then coming out into the warm. It was capturing all the moisture, freezing it. Then she was getting out. It would thaw, and then she would breathe in all the water, giving her double pneumonia. That's happening. She's not the only one it happened to. So I do not believe in those masks. I think they're not healthy for us. I don't think we're supposed to be in them for eight to 10 hours. And every time I walk into a business and I see every employee wearing those things, I feel bad for all of them. It's so stupid because we're in a state where it's not mandated, right? So I walk in without a mask. That employee's wearing a mask. It's worthless. It's absolutely fucking worthless. Especially if it's, like, uh, 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 you know, T-shirt or uh, bandana or uh, uh, cloth masks. I think they've already found out that there's only one or two types of masks that are actually doing everything that we need them to be doing in order for them to be effective, which is probably where you get the 9 to 20%, right? Because that one does it, it's 20% effective, where this one does not do any of that, so it's only 9% uh, percent effective. But we are going to have to learn to live with this, and that's the end of the story. That's it. It's not going anywhere, okay? And it's frustrating, and it makes me angry, but what, at the end of the day, what can I do except for do what makes me feel comfortable, right? And that's what you have to do for you. So I think we're all, we should all be on this page. And nobody's trying to kill anybody if they're not wearing a mask. You fucking psychos. No one's a murderer. When, when, when AIDS was coming around, when AIDS was in, when it was hot and blowing up and we didn't know what the fuck to do with it, nobody said wear a condom or you murder, you know what I mean? And now we're like, oh, you're a mur-. No, nobody's a murderer. No one's killing anybody. People are just trying to live their everyday life with COVID around. That's all we're trying to do. So you take care of you, and I'm going to take care of me, 
And let's just agree. If it's under 50% effective, it's kind of worthless. Right? You're going to take a medication that only has a 20% chance? Are you going to get a major surgery that only has a 20% chance? I wouldn't. I think it's a waste of time. I don't even care. You're like, oh, well, you got 20% chance of uh, cutting out this lung and your cancer. No. No. I'm just going to deal with it. 20%. It's such a, it's, I don't know. I don't know. So that's my thoughts on that. This is like a no brainer. We're all going to have to learn to live with this fucking virus. Uh, let's see here. All right. This one, I'm going to read a little bit because I thought this was cool. Workhorse abruptly drops lawsuit against postal service over new mail truck. So I talked about this months ago. Um, and it seemed like we were going to be seeing those trucks for the United States postal system, uh, coming out. Actually, I thought we were supposed to see them really soon. Um, but it looks like somebody was suing them, uh, for some reason. Uh, let's see. EV startup workhorse has abandoned its lawsuit protesting the United States Postal Service's decision to let Oshkosh Defense build the next generation mail truck. The court accepted workhorse's, uh, voluntary dismissal late Tuesday, just one day before the first oral arguments were scheduled being regarded the USPS attempts to dismiss the case. Workhorse filed the protest in the U.S. Court of Federal Claims in mid-June, nearly four months after the USPS announced that it had uh, awarded the contract to build the next generation mail truck to Defense contractor Oshkosh. Is that the same ones that did the overalls? Is that Oshkosh? Bagosh? What? Um, ending a contest that started in 2015. We are pleased to learn that Workhouse Group is withdrawn um, of the award. The United States Postal Next Generation Delivery Truck uh, contract is good to go. Um, all right. So they were suing them, uh, because they wanted to build the new trucks and Oshkosh won. So I didn't know any of this was going on when I read the article. Um, but now I know why, uh, the deadline's been moved because they couldn't, I'm pretty sure they couldn't allow Oshkosh to actually build the trucks until, Workhorse, uh, you know, either they beat them and won the case or this happens and they just drop the case. Um, so hopefully they can get crack lacking on these new uh, trucks and, you know, give our mail people uh, some safety, right? You know, some heat, some AC, a seatbelt, a fucking airbag, you know, little things, <laughs> You know, I know there's not too many mail trucks probably getting into major accidents or anything, but I bet you there's some instances where any one of those safety items would have been nice to have in the truck. You know what I mean? So I, I think this is going to, I think that hopefully this is going to be great. I hope this is going to be great because they're also going to get, uh, you know, they're not going to be uh, getting 10 miles per gallon anymore. I don't know if these are going to be full electric or hybrids. I don't remember. You'd have to go back and check it out. But I, I think that this is a good thing, and I'm looking forward uh, to seeing all those old mail trucks go away. I mean, 10 miles per gallon, and they've used them 10 years past their deadline? That's crazy. All right, so here's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it for this one. I wanted to get a little bit into this because this is crazy. So, North Korea is now expanding a facility uh, used to produce weapon-grade uranium. Um, it's got a video. Let's do it. How long is it? I never look at the video length. This could be way longer than Tonight I want it to be. satellite images obtained by CNN reveal a significant Two. expansion of a key North Korean nuclear facility. Yeah, Our senior national security this. correspondent, Alex Marquardt, is looking into it. Alex. What do these uh, images reveal about North Korea's missile program? This is, this is fascinating. 
Well, Jim, what these satellite images show, experts believe, is that there's an intention by North Korea to increase their production of weapons-grade nuclear material. That's according uh, to the Middlebury Institute. What you're looking at there is the Yongbyon Nuclear Research Facility Complex. And if you look at these, uh, these images over time, uh, one expert told our colleague Zach Cohen uh, that what it shows is that expansion there, adding a space of around 1,000 square meters that could hold uh, around 1,000 additional centrifuges. And what that means means for this facility is an increase in production uh, of around 25 percent of this weapons grade material. Uh, this is in line, what the experts say, is in line with what U.S. officials uh, also believe uh, that North Korea I is up to or is planning. And this comes on the heels of a, of a report by the International Atomic Energy Agency saying that they have uh, detected more uh, activity by a nuclear reactor at this site for the first time, Jim, since 2018. And this comes at the, oh. the same time North Korea is actively testing new missiles, including launches from a train? Yeah, so there's been a flurry of, of new missile tests, which when combined with these new satellite images really paints a, a disturbing picture. What you're seeing there uh, are ballistic missiles that were launched from a train on Wednesday. Uh, they were fired east about 500 miles, crashing down in the sea. Uh, the North Koreans said that they were fired from a railway-borne missile regiment. That comes just days, Jim, after we heard about another missile launch from the North Koreans on Sunday. Uh, those were two long-range cruise missiles uh, that had uh, never before been, uh, been tested. Um, so we have had this flurry of, of missile tests. On top of that, after those missile tests from the train on Wednesday, the South Koreans themselves tested another ballistic missile from a submarine. So you're really seeing this ratcheting up of tensions in an already extremely volatile region, Jim. Uh, of course, there is next to no communication, we understand, uh, between the Why U.S. and North Korea right now. Uh, oh. The State Department recently called for dialogue. Uh, but as far as we know, the North Koreans have not reached back out to the U.S., Jim. Holy shit. Um, that is just insane. I mean... What the hell is going on? Now, I don't think America has anything to worry about. What we do have to worry about is the simple fact that they may take it out on South Korea. And then we're going to be in a war with North Korea because South Korea is a very, very uh, good alliance. So, an ally. A good ally. So... I don't know what this means um, for the future, but, I mean, it's kind of crazy that they're doing this again and they haven't done it in uh, three years. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I don't think it's going to be going in a good direction. So, we'll see what happens. I don't know. I, I'm sure our people will talk to their people, you know, something like that. Um, let's see. Next, we're going to get into some fun stuff. China Shenzhou, 12 astronauts send back stunning images of Earth. Yes. Okay, everybody. So, yeah, this is kind of exciting, right? Because we're always like, oh, well, I don't believe that the Earth is round because... I don't believe in our satellite pictures. Those are all uh, edited and changed and fabricated and all this other shit, right? Well, these photos were taken by the 12 civilians that went to space uh, last week or something. Or maybe it, this is from six days ago. So maybe they went up uh, on July 30th. OK, so on July 30th of 2021, uh, th they were taking pictures and they're taking pictures of the Earth. And where is where is my zoom? Well, you might need to zoom in on your own, uh, but. Yeah, so here's a picture. They don't specify what type of cameras they, these these people were using or anything, um, but these are the pictures that they took personally. These are not satellite pictures, so I think this is really cool. Hey, hey, look. It's curved. 
And I didn't realize this, but I didn't think you could actually see the ozone layer. And according to this picture, you can. So that's kind of neat, right? I mean, you can actually see the ozone layer. And then this is uh, one of the cots. It looks like, uh, you know, two people can sleep there. Um, and then you've got pictures from, uh, I'm assuming, a uh, portion of South Africa photo, photo, photographed by um, Shinizu 12 astronauts Tango Hango in late August of 2021. Um, so you're looking at it from the satellite side of things. Um, you're seeing Africa. Um, then you've got this picture here is beautiful. I mean, look at that. I The satellites are so neat. So are those all fucking solar panels? I love this. It's so amazing. Look at the clouds. And then the earth itself. It is just so cool. So friggin' cool. So a couple photos. There's probably some more out there. This is all I found uh, with this article. But again, earth isn't flat. You know, the pictures are worth a million words, right? Or a thousand words or whatever the saying is. These photos taken by civilians show the earth is not flat. You know what I'm saying? I think this is fucking cool. I think it's neat because I w I've been saying this ever since they started talking about uh, shooting civilians up into space for like a fun trip, you know, a week getaway. And I'm like, cool. Everybody gets to bring their own phone and you send all the flat earthers up for free. Send them for free. I don't even care if they take pictures. Just send them up there, let them see it, have them come back down, and then you tell me the earth is flat, right? I think they should do that. If you are a true flat earther, you should get a free fucking ride. That's what I think. Um, and then um, I've got some world star stuff here. I love this. It's it, it's a great place to get some news. It's also a great place to get some gossip and all the other shit that goes on in life. Um, but this woman here um, got the scare of her life. And I thought this video was so fucking cool. It's crazy. It is crazy. I'm going to blow it up for you. All right. I kind of did some switching. But check this out. Now, the video itself was uh, probably a... Probably some uh, outside webcam. Um, so the, the it's a little grainy, but check it out. Um... Holy shit. She 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 opens the car door because she's grabbing a box of whatever. She's going to the store and she, then as she goes to get into the vehicle there's a bear in your car? I mean, what? Uh, that I would I'd shit my pants. I'm not going to lie to you. If a Bear was in my, I'm like, it's your car. It's your car. I'm out of here. You know what I mean? So I do not blame her for running off and screaming at the top of her lungs. Um, that looked like a, a, a grizzly, not a, a, well, what's, what's worse? The, the grizzly or the brown bear? I don't remember, but either way, that's a bear. It may only be a cub. It did look a little small. But if that thing stands up, it's about as tall as she is and weighs more than her. And it could slash her open like a razor blade through, a, I don't know, think of something soft, right? A melon. It's just going to cut through. An, oh, oh. It's going to cut through. That bear could cut through her like a hot knife through butter. I'm telling you, that is scary shit. You, 
These are not fucking your friends. They are not uh, little little uh, stuffed animals. They are not fun. They are not cute. They are dangerous creatures, and you should do exactly what she did if you're ever confronted by one. No, I'm just kidding. You should never do that because if that was a full-grown bear, it probably would have chased her down, and she probably wouldn't have been able to shut the door, and who knows? This could have been a completely different story. So... But I would still do the same thing. I'd freak the fuck out. I would freak out. That is so scary to have that happen, right? Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. The next one I was checking out was this right here. Okay. Chickens are awesome, right? I love eggs. I'm not big on chicken. I'm not big on turkey. But I love eggs. Love, love eggs. These are dinosaurs. These are dinosaurs. They have been around forever, and they will kill anything that gets in their path. They peck it to fucking death. They rip it apart. And this is just an example, so if you don't want to watch this video, I completely understand. Skip over this. But I think it's cool. Um, I mean, it just goes to show you that nature is just fucking brutal. Nature, nature is brutal, and the things that we think are so cute and cuddly, they're not. They're monsters, and they're killers. That's nature. Nature is not this organized thing. We are the organized thing that thinks nature should be organized like us. Well, it's never going to be because that's not the way it's supposed to be anyways. It's, it's supposed to be exactly how it is for them, which is they have... Three things that they need to do. They need to eat, and in order to eat, they need to kill, and then they need to stay hydrated. That's all they need to do. Everything else is just whatever. You know what I mean? So I thought this was uh, cool, and it it just shows you how much of a dinosaur. They, and I think this is one of the reasons why they think now, today, that dinosaurs were not scaly like lizards and snakes, but they were actually covered in feathers. I mean, hawks, eagles, all birds are been around forever. Now, may there have been some dinosaurs with the scales and the skin and stuff like that? Yeah, it's very possible. But, I mean, we got those on Earth today. They're called crocodiles and alligators and sharks. I mean, these things have been around for eons. You know, they survive the comet hitting, which is possible. Something had to survive. I don't believe all life was wiped out when that comet hit. So let's check this one out. It's a nice short one. So boom. Cutie mouse. Mousy mouse. Now, I don't know. It seems like the mouse got a little bit. Uh, he was like, oh, no, he got scared. Now he's going to try to fight back. Then he gets a little claw to the face, right? So now he's injured. And then, bam, he just gets pecked. That's the end of that mouse right there. And there's no sound on this video, so. But, yeah, I mean, that that's what they do. That's what they do. And then they'll peck the shit out of that little mouse, but that's the end of his story. They are dinosaurs. Right? They are killers. It's kill or be killed. That's the end of that story. There's nothing else um, going to happen from that. And then um, the last one I wanted to do was this one right here. I love this. And you're going to love it too. I know you are. So check this one out. All right. This guy is walking, and he sees something, and he records it with his phone. There's the police in here fucking, y'all. <laughs> no, he's fucking a prostitute. Motherfucker. The police. The nigga in here fucking a prostitute. Oh, hell no. This nigga in here. 
fucking a prostitute. Look, got his pants now. Look at this shit. He's like, stop filming. Boy, your ass would have locked me up for this shit. Boy, I'm finna call you in, cuz. You ain't here fucking prostitutes? Oh, hell no. I'm finna call your ass in, boy. I'm finna call your ass clean in. Hell no. Put them on blast. Gee. Look at this. It's fucking oh, out of gee. there. Unbelievable. And he's right. He's right. If that was anyone, any one of us, there's just no way a cop wouldn't arrest you for that. So he's absolutely right for putting this asshole on blast. Not only is he fucking in public, but he's fucking a prostitute. And if that was anybody else, we'd be handcuffed, pulled out of the car, car towed, prostitute in cuffs. They would have fucking called back up. It could have turned into a thing, but we would have all been arrested. So I fucking love this. Because it puts them in their place. Hey, assholes, if you're going to enforce the law, you have to fucking obey them too. You know what I mean? That's bullshit because how many people did this motherfucker throw in jail for doing exactly what he was doing? You know, I just can't stand this. It's just like, you know, when my parents used to tell me to do something and they wouldn't do it. It's like, oh, well, you have to listen to what I say and not, not copy what I do. It's like, well, that's fucking bullshit. You, uh, I've always taught by example, right? I think that's the best way. This is bullshit. Good for this guy for putting him out on blast, but it is just that. It is complete and absolute bullshit. These guys are girls all out there. They're all doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing. And I'm not saying all of them, all of them. I'm just saying, like, there is some bad apples in everything. And... This one got caught. I mean, his license plate, his car number, everything is, is, is recorded and put out on blast. And, you know, I just, I hope this officer loses his job. I really do. Because he doesn't deserve to be doing what he's doing if he's going to be breaking the law himself. So I thought that was really cool. I think it, I, I think it was a great way to end the podcast. And that's it. That's the podcast, everybody. Thank you so much, as always, for all uh, the love, the comments, the likes, the shares, the subscriptions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Again, if you're new to the podcast or if you're just watching the podcast and you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, all right? Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, set the alarms, share, rate, review, and comment. Please, it helps the algorithm of the podcast. It helps reach more people. And I need your help to do that. Again, this is free for you. It's not free to do. So I greatly appreciate you passing it on and sharing it, especially I believe that if you are enjoying this, that if you just told somebody uh, that you know, they might just enjoy it as much as you do. So pass it on, all right? Um, uh, If you want to follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Um, Go there, follow, extra content for the week. And then, of course, want to get more involved with the podcast, talkingwithtofer at gmail.com. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. Again, that is talkingwithtofer at gmail.com, T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. And if you want free merch, you got to send in a story. Put slow down in the subject line. Doesn't matter if it's a good one, bad one, positive, negative. You want to share it, and I put it out there, you're going to get some free merch, but you can only do it if you send it to the official email of the podcast. That's T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. And with that being all said, I hope everybody out there has a great Thursday. I hope you enjoy your weekend. 
And as always, I will talk to you later.